Today we're going to take a look at the hive we supered a couple of weeks ago and see how the bees are progressing. We're not expecting too much because the colony wasn't totally jam-packed yet and there's not much of a nectar flow at the moment in our area. But let's take a look and see what the bees have done on the frames and also cover the, the common question of how to get my bees to take to the flow frames faster. So sometimes that first time on your, your flow hive before the bees have covered it all in wax can take a little bit of time. At other times you can put a super on, you've got a strong colony, a strong nectar flow and they will wax up and fill that whole box full of flow frames in a couple of weeks which is quite amazing to see when it happens. So I'm just going to add a couple of gentle puffs into the uh, hive here, I've just gone underneath the screen bottom board. Now generally you'd wait a, a few minutes and then put your bee veil on. Make sure you protect yourself to minimise stings. If you're new to beekeeping, also have your gloves on until you get very comfortable with your hive. So I'm just lifting up the uh, hive roof. This time it um, came with the, the inner cover inside, which is fine. I'm just going to put the roof aside. And you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of action in the hive at the moment. You see there's only a couple of bees crawling around. If you open the side windows and there's only a couple of bees in here, it means the number of bees isn't strong enough yet to really fill this box. So you can't expect a lot of action on your flow frames quickly. There's also the, the view at the back of the hive here. You can see some bees working in these lower cells, which is a, a beautiful thing. So they're starting to work on it. And here they are getting right down inside the cells here. There's a, um, they've actually corralled a um, hive beetle there and uh, they're adding that little bit of wax you can see along these spine areas. You can just see the start of them preparing the frames to store nectar. Okay now if I uh, pull out one of these frames then um, we can have a look right down inside the cells at what the bees are actually doing. So to pull it out the J tool goes under the end of the frame and they're not very stuck in yet but if they, if they are more firmly stuck you also need to prise this end of your hive tool underneath the frame to lift it there also. Now if you take a, um, a close look here you can see the bees are actually waxing up the flow frames can you see those tiny little joints if I put it on a bit of an angle? So we've left space for the, for the bees' legs and wings in case some bees are down cells when you open your hive. And it's those spaces between the moving parts that they're, they're joining up with their wax to complete the, the uh, hexagon shape. So they are starting to work. So the issue here is um, only that we haven't got lots of bees and a, and a strong nectar flow. Otherwise we'd be seeing honey stored. But these will do fine. There's nothing you really need to do here. But if you were wanting to speed up the process of the bees taking to the flow frames, or you're just, just a bit impatient, and, and or perhaps you've got a really short season and you don't want to take any chances, then some people do paint wax melt some beeswax and paint it onto these surfaces. Now another thing you can easily do is grab some burr comb from in the hive and just mash it into the flow frame surface and what the bees will do is, is then redistribute that wax. They recycle the wax when it's close by to the cells. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I might just lay that one down for the moment in the hive. So grab a bit of burr comb from, from the bottom box. Now it's best if it's from the hive you're working on. 
and here's a bit that I um, prepared earlier. So all you do is throw it on the frame. Now don't be shy, you won't wreck your flow frame. And then you simply just mash it into the surface like that. And the bees will go, what's that doing there? That's out of line. And they'll actually chew all of that wax away and redistribute it in this area. And that can speed up the process of getting your bees storing honey in the flow frames. So what we might do is put one right on the window side of the hive so we can watch it happen over, over time. So if I pull this one out again, J tool under the end here and lift. Now I'm using my fingers in these two slots here to lift it up. Generally that works, sometimes you need to pry a bit more at this end with the hive tool. Okay. So let's put a little bit more burkame on here. I'm going to put it right where the window is. And simply grab your hive tool. Don't worry, you won't damage your flow frames. And the bees will then chew all of that away and redistribute it in this area, speeding up the process. But as said, it's not necessary with this hive. You can see they're already putting their wax down in the bottoms of the cells. They've started the process. They're just not a strong enough colony to really do rapid action in a couple of weeks. If there was lots of bees in a strong nectar flow, you'd see them, see them more advanced than that, storing honey. So after a while, you'll see them going up there and starting to chew away at that. Okay, I'll just show you what it looks like when the bees have actually waxed it up and started to store nectar. So I've got a frame here. And if you look in um, this region here, you can see they've then drawn out the, the cappings further and also started to wax up these regions. We'll just get some shadow on the, on the um, frame so you can see it probably. So here you can see they've got their nectar glistening in the bottom of the cells as they're dewatering it. And they've connected their wax, they've coated all the flow frame in wax and they've drawn out a little bit further and starting that process of dewatering. Now if you look up here, you can see that they're happy with the moisture content and they're starting to close those cappings in. So that's what it'll look like as your hive progresses. It's such a beautiful thing, isn't it, watching the bees do their amazing work. So you did, David would like to know, um, do the bees generally fill the flow frames from the inner frames first and then move to the outer? That's a um, great question, David, and they do. They generally start in the middle of the, of the box and move out towards the extremities. The only um, exception to that, well, there's lots of exceptions. Bees often do things you don't expect, but that's the general trend. But what can happen if they've filled the entire box and then they've got hungry, they'll often eat the bit just above the brood nest. So when you pull a frame, it'll look the opposite where they've left a section in the middle. Now, that's commonly like a, an arch shape just above the brood nest. So if you see that, they've actually eaten that honey away to feed to their babies. But when they're filling, they generally start from the center and move out to the edges of the hive. So when you see the window nice and full and capped, it's generally capped all the way through. So I'll show you what a frame looks like and please ask more questions. I'm here to answer your questions and help you get started with your beekeeping. So if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll answer them. Here's what a frame looks like when it's completely um, full and capped. So then they put their wax capping right over the top of the cells. So there's a couple of cells they've left, but generally it's all capped. And the other side too. Now, this is interesting. That they've left a bit right by the window. Now, so they've filled all of the center and they haven't quite filled to 
the window yet at this edge. You can see there they've left a bit on the window side. So from the front you're getting this view with the cells full on one side but not on the other. So this window really does give you a great window into the hive as to what's going on inside and gives you a good idea of when your hive is ready to harvest. And when it is you can see that capping from the outside of the hive get all the way down the cells and that's when you know it's ready to harvest. So there's a good trick. Some people have um, put uh, said that coating the frames in sugar helps. I haven't found that does anything. I wouldn't bother with that. Um, it's beeswax that they want to redistribute, not sugar or honey. So it's the burr comb that you want to spread around if you want them to, to get some faster action on the flow frames. Another question? Craig would like to know, can you put a super on your brood box too early? How do you know when the right time is? The, um, if you're in a warm climate like we are, you can super early. What that means is they will just take a while to actually fill those flow frames. So you'll be waiting a bit longer. You might be getting a bit more impatient and writing us messages. <laughs> but um, if you're in a colder climate, however, it's important that the size of the hive is, is right for how many bees you've got. So I wouldn't go and put a super right on a hive when it's, it's still really cold and the bees uh, and, and not that many in numbers because it just makes it a little bit harder for them to keep their hive warm and manage the hive. So the opportune time to put your super on is when your brood box is bustling with bees and they're, they're really starting to build up and build, build burr comb under the inner cover and they're looking for some more space. That's the perfect time to super because they'll get in there straight away and start um, working those flow frames. However, um, in this warm climate, you can put it on earlier if you wish. Aaron's asking, do you use a queen excluder on the flow hives? Yes. So um, what we found with the um, using a queen excluder or not a queen excluder is some queens will lay in the flow frames and some won't. So I've done a lot of testing with that and I've actually had a hive that would never lay in the flow frames and I thought, oh great. This, this queen doesn't lay in the flow frames, no problem, I don't need to use one. Then one day I actually witnessed them dragging the queen out the front entrance, I just happened to be there. And, um, and then three or four weeks later I had a look and sure enough they were laying eggs in the flow frame. So it's very queen specific. If you do experiment with no excluder, then make sure you check and see how your hive does and whether your queen lays in the flow cells. Um, Michelle has a mould question. She says, does mould tend to build up in these kinds of frames as she's seen mould take over wooden frames? Okay, the flow frames generally aren't an issue with mould unless you've got a hive that's all full of, of honey like that and, and um, you've pulled it out of the hive and left it in the shed and forgot, forgotten about it and it's, uh, and it's this kind of warm um, subtropical climate you'll find you will get some mould on the flow frames um, building up on the old wax that's on there and then it's just a bit annoying to clean out so it's best to um, to store them without honey on them if you're going to store them and that way they're, they're usually good to go again next time you go to put it back on a hive. Um, the mould on wooden components that is a, a um, problem of, of the more subtropical and tropical regions. Um, generally the bees look after it. There's not usually anything you need to do when your equipment's inside the hive. It's when you've left it out that it goes mouldy or sometimes the outside of the bee box can, can get mildew on it as well but that's more of an aesthetic issue than a problem. Jeff's just got his first flow hive and he's wondering if he should put the wax on his flow frames rather than just hoping to be lucky. Okay, 
I would say if you've got a hive that has lots of bees in it and there's flowers around, then I would just follow the instructions, put the flow hive on top and the bees will get in there and work it quite quickly. If you want to experiment and, you've, and you're coming into a time where there's not much nectar around and you want to see a bit, a bit more activity, then you can uh, get the burr comb as we showed you earlier and, and just put it into the flow frame surface to get a, uh, a bit more activity. Um, Helga has supered her hive too early and she says she has lots of hive beetles and only just put traps in three weeks ago. Would she be wise to take the super off or to leave it be over the autumn? Okay. Um, it's hard to know without specifically looking at the hive, but if you haven't got many bees in there and you know that in your area you're not gonna get many flowers over the winter, you may like to take it off and store the uh, flow super. If, if you think that you may get some flowers over the winter like we do have in this area, especially on the, in the coastal regions, then you could leave it on um, over the winter and you might find they'll start to store some honey. So it really depends what's coming up in your season. You can ask uh, local beekeepers or, or um, get on our honeyflow.com forum and you might find an answer as to, to what's likely to be coming up in your region. Um, as to hive beetles in the flow frames, um, they, they can't really damage the flow frames. The bees will use the cells as an area to corral the um, hive beetle into. Now, that, um, they do that with any type of, of conventional um, honeycomb cell. So the difference is with the flow frames is that you can see from the outside the bees corralling the beetles into those cells. Um, on beetles, we uh, there there is one of our videos shows you how to how to use the the beetle trap if you've got the flow hive too, or how to how to make some beetle traps on on the bottom board here. Now, um, if your colony is nice and strong, you generally don't have to worry too much about beetles. It's when your colony is weak that um, you run into problems, especially if they go queenless and the numbers are diminishing or if there's another reason why the colony is getting smaller and, and weaker, then um, that's generally when the hive beetles can take over. Chuck would like to know what your thoughts are about providing an upper entrance into the flow super as well as the regular lower entrance. Okay. So an upper entrance does um, bring about a few complications. Now, the reason why people like a top entrance is usually if they've got snow build up on their hive. Now, if you're putting an upper entrance on your hive, then you wouldn't have the excluder in place because otherwise you get into the situation where, um, where a queen could go on a mating flight, for instance, and come back into the other entrance and be in the top box where your flow frames are and then stuck because you can't go down into the brood box past the excluder. So for that reason it's best not to use an upper entrance unless you um, plan to remove the excluder and then want to experiment with an excluderless hive or simply open up a top entrance for winter if you're in one of those snowy areas in which case you might be removing the flow super altogether or you might decide just to move the excluder and let the bees eat the honey out of the flow frames over the winter. So um, top entrance um, to me really only makes sense in those areas where, <coughs> where you want the, um, the, if there's snow build up and you really want the bees still to have access to an exit to go, um, to go out of the hive to, to defecate in winter. Deborah said last year she harvested her flow frames and then the bees stopped going back into them and only stayed in the brood boxes. Any ideas? Um, that would mean generally there's not enough bees to fill it because if there is a lot of, a lot of bees in your, in your brood box then regardless of what's in here, even if you had um, just 
a bunch of um, pieces of plywood, the bees would go into there because they would need the space. So um, that points at the bee numbers not being strong enough. If you've got other hive boxes, then you might want to take them away if you've got other supers and um, compress the hive a bit so your bees then move into this box or otherwise if it's um, a setup like this with one brood box and one super then you may find that your colony is weak for some reason. Perhaps they swarmed and they're building back up. Perhaps they've um, got uh, a queen who's not laying enough eggs. Perhaps they've got um, some um, chalk brood which is slowing them down or, or, or um, AFB or EFB or some kind of issue that is meaning the hive is staying um, weak for whatever reason. So to fix that you need to get in there and have a look and see that you have a happy healthy brood box making sure they're laying plenty of brood, plenty of eggs that's developing into brood in your brood box. And um, when you see them doing that, then you know that the numbers are going to build up. If it's looking quite sparse downstairs, then you'll need to um, uh, have a look at why that might be. And you may need to introduce a new queen into your hive to really get them going again. Um, Jason is wondering if he can use essential oils like lemongrass oil mixed with water to encourage the bees to go into the flow super. Um, you can try anything you like. I'm all open to um, experimenting. Lemongrass oil is generally used as a, as a swarm lure, like a, a queen pheromone. So it does tend to lure, lure bees. People put them in a Ziploc bag and put a little tiny pinhole so the lemongrass oil can um, just slowly seep out and put that in, in an empty hive box hoping to attract a swarm. Like it's called a bait hive. But I, um, personally, I wouldn't bother putting essential oils on the flow frames. The recipe to get them um, active on here is lots of bees. So when you open the window, you can see lots of bees in here. And also a, a good honey flow on. When those two things coincide, you'll get very fast action on your flow frames. If you want to speed things up, then rather than putting essential oils on your frames, I would suggest getting a bit of burr comb from the bottom box, as we showed you earlier and um, just mashing it into the flow frame surface to um, get the bees really working that area. Jesse's asking, do you recommend the flow supers for northern climates? We do, we have a lot of people using flow supers in northern climates. The, um, the thing that happens in, in the far north, um, in Canada we've got some, some beekeepers that are actually stacking flow supers five high. The reason why they do that is they have a very short nectar flow and they're wanting to store as much honey as they can. Of course, another, another way to go about it would be to tap quite often. So let's say you, you've got one or two supers in, in the northern climate and the, the honey's building up really fast because it's a really short season and everything's flowering at once. Then you just want to get out there and harvest it as soon as it's full to make space in order to keep getting the yield. Um, this year, our, um, our beekeepers who I'm describing in Canada got more yield off their flow frames than they did off their conventional hives. So I would certainly recommend flow frames in the northern regions. We've got lots of people using them with great success. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in again next week and we'll have something interesting to show you.